Mike, uh, as we were uh, alluding to earlier, you've also been an advocate for better uh, mental health uh, programs and, of course, a national autism strategy. Tell us a little bit about those aspects of your advocacy. Yeah, you know, uh, that's talking about the mental health stuff. I, I had the, the privilege of serving as shadow minister for mental health addictions and suicide prevention for uh, about a year, uh, just over a year ago or just under a year ago. And uh, it was a real eye opener. It was, a, you know, a learning experience to have this, this opportunity to chat with mental health experts uh, from across the country, you know, folks like Kids Help Phone and, and, uh, and other organizations, the Mental Health Association Commission um, and, and other stakeholders and just a fantastic learning experience. I mean, you know, we are in a mental health crisis right now. I think coming out of COVID, uh, COVID has exacerbated things, but you take a look at some of the challenges we're talking about and we have significant challenges with mental health in this country. And there are measures that we can take, uh, you know, our, my colleague Todd Doherty uh, is a perfect example of, you know, someone who in an opposition, as an opposition member of parliament uh, has, uh, you know, put forward a initiative, a motion in the House of Commons a, a few years back for a 988 suicide prevention hotline. And, uh, you know, something simple, something that when you're in your darkest moment, and you're you know, struggling, and it's might be the middle of the night, and you're completely overwhelmed, you're not going to think to do a Google search to find a 1877 number to find the help that you need. But uh, a 988 uh, prevention hotline, suicide prevention hotline is something that's overdue that the Americans have this in place already at this point in time. And they're learning some things, but it's something that the advocates have, have long called for. So that was something that as the shadow minister, I just built on the work, quite honestly, that Todd did. Um, in championing this uh, this 988 suicide prevention hotline. Now, Todd's Todd's in that position now, and uh, we've seen recently uh, the government announced that it's uh, it's coming, I believe, in the fall. But it's a long time coming. That's just one small right. example of things that we can do. But you know, we've got a uh, you know a broad, I guess, like I said, crisis in this country. It was it was heartening to see that in the 2021 campaign, each of the parties had you know, platform commitments that they'd put in place to deal with it uh, and, and fairly significant commitments. I think that where we've been pushing um, in, in the House of Commons is that Liberals wound up winning the election in the, in, uh, the last election, 2021. They had promised a uh, Canada mental health transfer, very clearly laid out four and a half billion dollars over five years, dedicated money to the provinces for this Canada mental health transfer. And they even laid out that it was supposed to start immediately the year of the election, $250 million the first year, and I think seven, seven hundred or six hundred and fifty million dollars the second year. And that has just completely fallen by the wayside. Uh, in fact, I think that they've acknowledged now that they're not going to go down that road. Um, they'll make some investments in mental health, but not the Canada mental health transfer. And I think you know, I think it's important for us to keep the heat on, you know, during election campaign, we might have had different promises that were made. In our, our case, we focused a lot on money for recovery and, and those types of things um, for addictions and, and, and other things. But um, when when Canadian political parties make promises as significant as, as that, um, they need to be kept. And uh, this is something that we've kind of kept the heat on for, for, for a long time as well. In addition to that, though, of course, as again, as a member of parliament, you have this ability to drive conversations that right. might not be about massive government spending. It might be about highlighting the incredible work that, you know, that Kids Help Phone does, that our Mental Health Commission does, that an organization, a Canadian organization like Jack.org does that a lot of people don't know about, highlighting those those organizations that are doing great work, fostering conversations. And, uh, um, you know, at the end of the day, no amount of money is going to completely address mental health issues. There's a conversation that we need to have as 40 million Canadians about supporting one another with our mental health as well. Uh, are you getting the sense that this is uh, something that Canadians are talking about more and more, though? Oh, I, I think I think we've made huge strides in it. I think that uh, I think that it's one of the things coming out of COVID that there was a lot of disconnection. I think that we highlighted. One of the things that experts talk about is the power of connection. And if you don't have that connection, the negative results of not having that connection, uh, particularly at certain stages in your life, particularly in the early years and those kind of things. So you think about kids that would have started school but didn't start school in person um, during COVID. 
Um, you know, there's a there's an increasing spotlight and increasing sort of body of evidence around uh, the fact that that had a negative impact, right. but that, you know, meaningful connection.